Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Hype Queen podcast. You are with your host Megan as always. I hope you are oh so well. I am feeling significantly better after my little mini break last week from getting whatever the hell was going around. So I either blame the people around me that are sick or the babes that I have the absolute pleasure of <laughs> uh, spending a lot of time with bunch of kids. Um, if you know, you know. Um, so quick weekly wrap up from me last week. I literally just basically battled trying to get better. Um, trying to still work and do things. <laughs> um, so it was a bit of a balance, but then we had quite a busy weekend with, um, events that we had on as well as uh, we have 18th birthdays. Uh, we had the footy grand final. We had the boys footy finals. It was a very big weekend. Um, but a lot of fun. And then obviously Father's Day on Sunday. So you get to hang out my daddy which is always a good time as well. So I hope that you enjoyed your weekend too and are looking forward to a beautiful week ahead. I, as per usual, had a topic planned out for today, but again, in true Meg's fashion, I am going to go straight off script and I am want to talk about morning, Mondays. I'm going to talk about Mondays, not just mornings got mornings in my head talking about Monday mornings now this topic came across my brain because in the morning girl movement we were talking about uh how much well not so we the, the girls a little, little, little less me because you know I could talk about mornings all day every day so about how they are loving their mornings significantly more um, because they're being obviously prepped with um, a good reset the night before so talking about you know, Monday mornings coming around and, you know, being a little bit less daunting, a little bit, being a little bit less overwhelming because we catch up every single week to do a Sunday reset um, and it's changed their relationships with morning somewhat, which is so cool and so awesome. And it really made me think to like how often you hear, you know, when you see memes about the Sunday scaries and, you know, people were saying it's already Monday and, you know, and it's like even whole songs about it. And like, as I was writing the notes for this podcast, all I could have was that, I think it's like, it's, I don't even know that I was literally like one lot one verse of the song. I know I think it's called Manic Monday. And then it just made me think like how the shit is living for the weekend. Like how that, how is that actual a thing that we do? Like two days out of seven, just for fun. Like it's just not it. And I think because I have changed my life and my routine and my everything so dramatically, I've had the ability to be able to, you know, change up my Mondays so that it's sort of like I take a little bit more chill on a Monday knowing that it's like basically my admin days um, my sister and I catch up on a Monday to set um, everything that we need to do up for the week um, I record the podcast on Mondays which I look forward to and I thought hang on I've taken this a step back and I've actually just kind of like introduced things that I love to do into my Mondays so now yeah, obviously we have jobs we have businesses we have have all of the you know things in life that come up uh, which if you hate your job then that's a whole other topic um, but what I want to talk about today is what can you do that your Monday self will thank you for right so obviously our weekends are fun you know we go out for drinks we go out for nice beautiful meals we catch up with friends we go to sporting events we do all of the things and then we're like knackered by Monday morning and why does it have to be that way? Why can we not inject a little bit of that excitement for the weekend into, you know, your every single day? And then I thought, well, you know, what do we do on weekends that you don't do during the week? All right. So you relax, you rest, you spend time with friends and family. And, you know, we put such a significant weight on these things being the best fun and work just being shit or, you know, your typical everyday life just being a bit shit. And that's, I guess, what makes it shit is that you hold an emotional charge to any of this stuff and it makes you feel a certain way. So you, you know, obviously, again, work is a big part of our life. Business is a big part of our life. And um, obviously it has to be done. So, but how one can you make or change or shift your mindset around, you know, you have to go to work today, you have to do whatever. Um, but not only that, how do you spend time each day not just you know doing the mundane things but making you know doing one or two things that are like more fun or something that you would do on a weekend can you bring that into your week so I thought of a bunch of things that I have probably implemented very actually they're very recent implementations still um, and I'm still trying to find my groove with my week so 
you know, and again, obviously with people, some people working weekend, having weekdays off. So just, you know, use these as they sort of apply to you. So my suggestions here and the things that I've kind of played around with on how to make my weekdays feel a little bit more weekendy um, is self-care every damn day. So whether that is a nice bath, whether that's a face mask, whether that is moisturizing my whole body, whether that is like, you know, whatever. I have obviously a whole self-care um, list that I like to go through and just do the things that make me feel good. So, um, you know, I again, I go to the gym, I, but I also do, a, you know, nearly an hour walk every morning. And obviously, you know, the walk is great for fitness, but the, my mind gets so much more cleared on that walk. And I get to see the baby ducks and I get to see the sunrise and I get to do all those things. That to me is self-care. So again, doing a face mask, having a nice bath. I mean, I don't fucking fit in the bath that I have here, but you know, if I did, I would probably enjoy it more. But if you do, can you create, you know, a little spa ambience for yourself? You know, can you, get engrossed in your favorite book for an hour or two a night, you know, whatever that looks like for you. And however, I guess you best fill your own cup up and what self-care looks like to you, try and implement that irrespective of whether you're trying to make your weekdays feel more weekendy either way, try and do that every day anyway. And think to yourself, if you, you know, what do you do on the weekend that you don't do during the week? So, I mean, we connect with people, right? We, um, you know, go, as I said before, go out for meals. We do, you know, sporting things. We do, you know, catch ups. We rest. We relax. We do, we do all of the things. So why can't you implement that into your week days, not just weekends? So my other ideas um, and recommendations around um, being able to implement that kind of vibe is call or FaceTime or spend time with friends during the week. So I... Obviously, I'm a relatively sociable person. Uh, I do. Um, I'm, you know, if you see me, I guess at any typically any events or anywhere that I'm kind of like around large groups, I'll tend to sort of like flit around and and chat all the way. Um, my social battery, however, for you know certain types of crowds, I suppose, um, dies very very quickly. But when you have you know your best friend or you know your partner or you know, anybody, I guess, a family member that you love to speak to or that make you laugh. And I can think of probably six examples just off the top of my head of people that if I'm having a fucking horrible day um, that I'll call just, you know, to sort of make me laugh. So don't wait for it to be a bad day. Just literally call them or FaceTime them or spend time with them during the week as opposed to waiting to stockpile everybody up on a weekend. Now, the other suggestion is do something more fun with your commute. So I don't drive, I guess, your typical commute these days. However, when I do, I just fucking love it. So not only do I scream at the top of my lungs when I am singing along in my car, having the best time, but if I'm trying to kind of implement this and make it, you know, my weekday feel more like a weekend, I probably will listen to, and this is, might sound weird, but hear me out, listen to a travel vlog. Like I love watching travel vlogs on YouTube when I'm looking to go to a particular place because obviously, you know, you can basically live, you know, through somebody else's experience and do, and find out things that you do and don't want to do for, you know, that particular the, the country that you're visiting, for example. So that's a lot of fun. And again, call a friend just for a chat. And I find that that will also make my commute go quickly if you're stuck in traffic instead of, you know, being pissed off and being like, oh my God, the traffic and oh my God, I have to do this when I get home. Oh my God. Like, how can you break that pattern of thought? How can you do something that's fun, more high vibe, more exciting, more, you know, whatever um, on your commute? Because, you know, I know to, not so much in Adelaide, I suppose, we, you don't really drive that far in Adelaide that you're spending more than an hour probably one way in the car. Um, but I do know of some people in the Eastern States States, you know, friends that I have there, they can have up, up to, you know, a three hour um, commute round trip. And it's just like, that's such a lot of, like, it's a lot of dead time. So again, this is like slightly tangent, going on a tangent here, but if you're trying to learn something, what better time to do it than listening to, you know, audio books or podcasts or whatnot, um, then why you're sitting in the car bored out of your skull. Uh, but again, if you're trying to kind of, you know, bring more fun in and, and that kind of more playful element, call a friend for a chat. Or even, you know, I can't count how many times I probably recommend this podcast. But the Hamish and Andy podcast is like my favorite thing on a Thursday to do when I go for my walk is typically I'll listen to podcasts or um, on my audio book or something like that. But Thursday mornings is specifically reserved for, for Hamish and Andy. So love. <laughs> um, my next recommendation is to socialize midweek instead of stockpiling catch ups till the weekend. 
Now, I feel like this is a little bit of a mind over matter battle with a lot of people because obviously, you know, we have long days at work and then we're fucking exhausted and we do whatever, we get home, we still got all these things to do, right? Obviously, we all have those things going on. And then bear in mind, though, when you get to the weekend, you've also worked a full week, you know, you've also done bits and pieces throughout the week as well that make you tired. So instead of socializing all weekend and, you know, being exhausted by the following Monday, who can you see during the week? Because not only, obviously, you're going to have fun catching up with friends, you're going to mix it up and kind of like change up your routine so that each day isn't going to feel like the same. And you're going to actually be able to like, you know, wake up and have something to look forward to as well for the night. And again, depending on who you're catching up with, I don't recommend catching up with people you don't enjoy spending time with or who are trainers, obviously. Um, but if it's a catch up that you're super excited about, then, you know, obviously you're going to, you know, think about it all day and it's going to be awesome. Now, my next one is intentional rest. Now, when we're talking about how to make Mondays less shit and how to make your weekdays feel more like weekends, you're like, why this, why on earth is she recommending intentional rest? I'll tell you why. So again, when you have big weeks, whatever, we use the weekends typically to, you know, recharge. Um, and I found myself doing this quite a lot is that yeah, I knew if I had busy weekends or weekends where I had a lot of social engagements or I knew I was, you know, maybe going to be having a couple of extra drinks or whatever, I would schedule then or, you know, look to spend the next weekend doing absolutely nothing. So again, it's that all or nothing as opposed to kind of like bring it all holistically together so that you can kind of enjoy a more rounded, I guess, life as opposed to like going hard as one weekend and then the next weekend, you know, falling in a heap. So that's why intentional rest I found is amazing because, you know, even on Friday night before I went to the 18th, I had, you know, a couple of hours in the afternoon. And again, there's always going to be things that you can do with your time. But I was like, you know what? No, I've, you know, had a massive week. I'm going to spend some extra hours. I had a nap and I recharged. I felt fucking great <laughs> when I woke back up on Friday night. So intentional rest during the week. So knowing, again, if you maybe got an engagement or something on the following night or whatnot, just using that time just to literally sit and do nothing. And it's also going to allow you to recharge, but it was also going to remove any guilt that you have associated with, you know, I don't like to use the word, you know, quote unquote lazy or whatever, like that will remove all of that. So intentional rest is a great way. Again, also rest is something that I genuinely look forward to. And I don't know, like, again, whether you're into, you know, human design or astrology or anything like that, being the projector that I am, you know, we, we enjoy rest. We enjoy our solitude. We enjoy that time. And if I know that after, you know, working 16, 17 hour days for, you know, two or three days in a row, that the next night that I have purposely cleared out my whole evening just to be able to you know, not necessarily even go to bed earlier, but just have the ability to have that time and space to do whatever I want in it and call it rest. I know I'm looking forward to that evening as well. So it's again, bringing our mind to something to look forward to. Now, my next recommendation is get up earlier and make yourself a nice brekkie or take yourself out for brekkie or go and have breakfast with somebody, right? Mix it up. Coming out of, you know, I am the most routine person ever on this whole planet. I've never met somebody who loves more routine, more, more than me. So I found that by implementing things like this and, you know, going out for breakfast, you know, on a Tuesday morning randomly, instead of, you know, a brunch on a Sunday, it's like a really great way to mix it up and kind of keep you, your, I guess, subconscious on it. So it's like, oh, okay, it's not the weekend, but it's like, you know, it feels like the weekend. How, how often have you like woken up one, you know, random I don't know, Wednesday. And you're like, yeah, thank fuck it's Friday. And you're like, oh wait, no, it's Wednesday. You can almost trick yourself into going through though, you know, enjoying that fun more often when you throw yourself out as routine with doing different things like this. So if you can, I guess, imagine just being like making, you know, the effort to get up two hours extra earlier, right. On whatever morning. And again, you get to take yourself out for a nice breakfast and whether you want to, you know, have breakfast with a friend or do whatever. And you typically do that on a, you know, a weekend, for example, one, your mind's going to be like, oh, we don't normally do this on this day. This is new. And you're just going to start to create kind of like new, new neural pathways that are going to be more exciting and more, you know, like less like, fuck, I've just got to go to work now. Um, but also you're going to the next day, it's going to be like, oh, wait, no, it was yesterday, Sunday. We don't really do brunch on a Sunday. Is Monday tomorrow? What? And by like leaning into that kind of like 
again, it's a like loosely confusion, I suppose, um, and making something really positive out of it. Because if you, you know, if Sunday feels like a Wednesday and Wednesday feels like a Sunday, and then all of a sudden you get to Friday and you're like, oh, shit, amazing. It's Friday, Sunday tomorrow. You know, you see the confusion that our poor little subconscious will go through. <laughs> um, and the other one I kind of, you know, was playing around with. And again, this is purely because I just, you know, I'm trying to work out my weeks as it is with this, you know, huge shift in life where I'm now working completely for myself. I can create my own schedule. I can do all of these things. And, and I guess when every time I say that to somebody or, or every time people kind of think about it, it's like in my, I guess, context, it's like, Oh, you can create your schedule. How awesome is that? It's the best thing ever. It's like, you know what it is, but it's getting the balance right between not working yourself stupid every single second of the day because you feel very guilty if you don't to the pendulum swinging completely the other way where you're like, yeah, fuck yeah, I've got all day to do this. I've got all day to do this. I don't have anybody, you know, ringing me. I don't have to be at work at a certain time. I don't have to do this. I don't have to do that. And having the opposite end be the truth. So it's a tricky little negotiation that I'm still working through. So this was the other idea where this sort of came from, but working thing, we're utilizing things like working from home days or even annual leave days, you know, during the week to break things up. And that's what I think it is because we're so routine to being like the seven days in a week. There's five work days. There's, you know, two days of a weekend, but you know, it doesn't need to just be that way. We can mix it up. We can switch things around. We can change it up however we want. And I really think that this all comes down to kind of like, you know, just trial and error, trying new things that feel good. And eventually those things that you implement are going to become the norm for you really, really quickly, right? So it's going to be like, you're going to be one week, you decide every Tuesday morning, I'm going to take myself out for breakfast. Eventually that's just going to become a known thing. So then you might want to mix it up again and say, fuck it, Tuesday and Thursday, I'm going to take myself, you know, it's, it's a, it's a random example, but you get it. So Everything that I've mentioned requires quite a lot of, well, not a quite a lot of, but a certain amount of organization prior. So you have the time and space to do these things without the guilt. So you already know, I'm going to say, seize the morning, <laughs> get up earlier, whatever. Um, but there are also other ways to optimize your time better so that you have more time and space to do these sorts of things. Now, that is a whole other conversation, which I will not kick off today because we're purely talking about making Mondays less awful and making some parts of your weekday feel like your weekend. Uh, but I will eventually do a podcast on optimizing your time because I, let me tell you, have become the bloody queen at it. So Imagine all the time that you spend complaining about it being Monday, complaining about, you know, Sunday afternoon, your whole, you know, basically the rest of your days written off. Imagine that time was used for planning how you're going to spend your days with more things that you love or implementing more things you love or bringing in more things that are fun as opposed to just like, you know, your day-to-day -day routine, finding magic in the mundane, again, completely separate topic, but how much also another concept, how much better would you wake up knowing you've got something to look forward to that day or that night? So you plan a lunch with a friend. Like I said, you've got a breakfast plan for yourself. You've got a catch up with a friend of the evening. You've got, you know, a rest spot booked in of your nighttime and you're not doing anything or you might be going out to the movies. Like the options are literally endless. And again, it's less about like, fuck, I've got to go to work today. And it's more about, oh, awesome. This is going to be part of my day now. And that is literally going to be so empowering. And it will also remove the negative feels about the week versus the weekend, because you're really injecting and implementing and bringing in things that you would do on your weekend into your week. So I have just found that these things have mixed things up beautifully. And as I said, trying to get all the groove with my schedule and, you know, looking at life as less as you know, segmenting it to this is what you do in the weekday and this is what you do on the weekend, but really trying to encompass as many of the things that I love to do into my day as possible. So, you know, yes, my days are still incredibly hectic. My work days are still nuts. My work days are still very fucking long. I'm still doing all of the things all of the time. However, since calling in and just implementing small things that I just absolutely love doing, it gives me something to look forward to. It breaks up the monotony. It, you know, gives my brain the ability just to have some space and some time to, you know, reset and re whatever it bloody needs to do. And I think more clearly, I feel a lot better and I have a lot less dread. Again, even if I've had a big weekend where I'm exhausted and Monday comes around and 
again, when your alarm goes off at 4 a.m. in the morning and you don't have a boss that you know is going to be pissed off with you if you call in sick or if you're late to work or whatever, it's fucking hard to push yourself to keep going because if I don't get up and do what I need to do, who's going to tell me off? I mean, I might miss meetings, which is I would never do. And, you know, I have these other like, measures in place to keep me accountable. But what, what would stop me from basically shifting everything to the evening time or the afternoon time or the whatever time, right? It's just you need to, one, enjoy what you're doing and know that these things come and you're not going to love every single moment of every single day. But bringing as much enjoyment and joy and fun and excitement into every day as you possibly can. So that's what I have for you today. I hope that is helpful. I hope that you try these. And as always, I would love to hear anything that you guys implement that I haven't mentioned today. Um, And as as your way, I guess, of not waiting to the weekend to have fun. And, And it's that concept of like not waiting till you get the thing to have fun. It's just like having fun in life in general, because, you know, I love to put myself in a pressure cooker where I do not release any kind of you know, valve where I'm just about to explode because I am very good at putting pressure on myself and not releasing any of it so that I can keep moving forward in life. I'm bloody phenomenal at it. So (laughs) before I get to that stage and before I put too much pressure on myself that I'm going to implode or explode either or these, you know, are just ways that I've found to, you know, release that valve and just really remind me not to take life so seriously. So I hope you have a beautiful rest of the day, night, week, what, and whenever you're listening to this. And I will see you in the next episode. Love you so much.